welcome. It has been a while since we've been together. Shul is now closed. We're not supposed to spend time with in each other's presence. These are very challenging times, very trying times. The scariest part is that it's extremely unchartered. Are we going to be in this situation for the next two weeks, six weeks, months? Nobody knows. It's going to get more drastic. Nobody knows. I believe that with our extra time, it is important for us to give some serious thought to a important positive lesson from the coronavirus and a different challenge for us as part of the Jewish people. The important lesson, positive lesson for the coronavirus is that for all of them, the people who are listening to this, who are under the age of 50, who have agreed and taken upon themselves tremendous sacrifice, but it's not because they're in danger, it's not because their children are in danger, or their siblings are in danger, it's because they're worried about a segment of the population, it's a segment of the population, that is potentially in danger, and also worried that if too many people come sick, then it will be too great of a burden on our hospitals. But it's not because of personal fear. It's out of a sense of responsibility to a small segment of our population. I think that's a phenomenal, positive thing to talk about the world in general, the way it lives today. That we're willing to take upon ourselves hardship in order to protect those that are more vulnerable than we are. I believe that the lesson is it has to go one step further. We have to take that willingness to take accept upon our hardship, to take a sense of responsibility for those that are not as successful. I believe that globalization has been a tremendous success, but with it, it has brought a wiping out of the middle class, it has not brought the sense of wealth to the developing nations. It hasn't reached that point where they have been able to take advantage of globalization to help the poor nations. It is our responsibility to think about that. It's our responsibility to worry about the poor people. In our community, if you know of somebody that's in their 80s, 70s and 80s who's locked up in a house, a shut-in as they call it, can you call them? Can you make sure they don't need anything delivered to their door? Take a sense of responsibility, worrying about how you can help the part of the vulnerable population. So the idea of using this time, which you're at home, or talking with your children, how you can be, take, show greater concern and responsibility for a segment of the population that's not your segment whether they be poor or whether it be the concept of globalization. Judaism, in this period in time, says that by talking about the campaign, which we have in our show every time in the month of Nisan, to make sure that as we approach the holiday of Pesach, that not only can the people in our community who are wealthy have all their needs taken care of for Pesach, but every Jew is. And the Jewish people have created a tax, a yearly tax, to make sure that every Jew has that opportunity to do it. I believe this is the message, a positive message of the coronavirus, and we should all incorporate it and think about it. Think about how we can help those who are in greater need, how we can create a better situation for them. The challenge is, in my opinion, from a Jewish perspective. Judaism, believes very strongly in the idea of a group. The strength of Judaism is in a group, from the fact that we have a minion, the only time that we are able to appreciate and acknowledge and go public about Hashem's kadosh, His holiness, is in a kaddish, in a minion. This is the first time in our history that I know of 
that the Jewish nation in its entirety has not been able to go to a minion. Even during the Holocaust, they had minyanim, whether it was in the ghetto or the Warsaw ghetto in the cellars, or was even in the concentration camps, they had minions. They had minions. It's the first time that we've willingly given up the idea of understanding that we move together as a group. Group activities as a Jewish people are the, of the greatest importance, be it Mount Sinai, be it the fact that we as a group went in Egypt and sacrificed the Paschal sacrifice, be it at the story of Purim, we all fasted together. But when we, as Jewish people, work together, that's when we achieve excellence in our growth. We are being challenged now. We're being denied the opportunity to come to show, to be able to talk of ideas, to argue with the rabbi, to be able to discuss ideas. This is a tremendous challenge. It's something we have to think about. In Judaism, there's a very scary concept that says that a person who studies by himself, not only does he not become wise, he becomes a greater fool. Because as I pointed out many times, I've never, ever lost an argument with myself. Whenever I'm arguing with myself, I'm always right. It's only when I argue with other rabbis, be it Roy Lachman, Roy Ben Charim, or others that I find myself wrong. But if I argue with myself, I'm always right. Locking yourself up at the at the direction of our medical and country leadership is appropriate, is proper. But we have to think and realize that we have to come up with other ideas, whether it's virtual learning, whether it's interacting with people by calling and being in touch. This is the responsibility that we have to be creative. Pick up the phone and say, Rabbi, you know, I was thinking, I've had this question. Let me hear your insights. Rabbi Ben Charin, Rabbi Rapport, Rabbi Shields, Rabbi Lachman, pick up the phone and call them. Everybody has more time on their hands because of the coronavirus. Take advantage. Don't stay alone. Looking forward that with God's help, soon, very soon, not hopefully at the same time when Mashiach comes, but very soon, the next few weeks, we'll see each other again and talk about our shared experiences and our shared growth as Jews. Thank you.